because you can ask the computer to do the work for you. When you're building machine learning technology, you get to have the computer take care of everything for you. I really like this. this the idea where I can just sit back and the computer just does all the work. Doesn't that sound nice? But it takes a lot to get there. And in order to get from A all the way to the Z in the finishing, there are a lot of steps. And I think some general foundations are glossed over because of all the heavy algorithms that are behind machine learning programs. And so what I want to do is create a, a quick little series uh, of videos that walk through real world examples and break down just the simple use cases. Now we can go a lot further, build more optimal systems with better algorithms depending on our overall use case. However, I just want to sort of get the basic concepts in, in preparing our data. So that's like part one, data preparation. And it is necessary because there's a lot to it, but let's let's keep it simple first. So what, so what I have here is a basic goal that we're gonna achieve. We have sample data here. We have some text, right? Some organic data that a, a human would normally interact with. This could be anything. This could be classifications, on other data, this could be columns in a spreadsheet, this could be photographs, this could be sensor data, this could be audio data, it could be a lot of different things. But to keep it simple, we're just gonna go with text. And in order, there's a step that you have to do before, before you get into it, before you can actually train a model, train an AI to do tasks for you, you have to prepare the data and you have to put it into a format that AI likes. And in these days, AI likes matrices. And in order to get data that is organic like this, like this text, hi, sunny day, into these numbers, these floating point numbers, we have to convert this data into this data. And that will be our preparation step. Now there's a lot of ways that we can go about converting these two data points. We can do it letter by letter. We can do we can do it so one letter at a time, or we could do it word by word. So just the word sunny, the word day. We can do things like that, which helps add more context. And then when we're generating the vector, right? When we're generating the vector, we can add additional information into it, such as relationships between each of these elements in their position. So there's just a lot of things we can do, but I wanna keep it just super simple. Let's start off with something super simple and we're gonna write a vectorization algorithm that will get us started and it will provide something that will actually work. It'll be something that is actually useful. How does machine learning even work when we're building AI models? There's a lot to it. And there are so many details that it could take a year or more to cover every single aspect. There is a faster path though. I think we can get there a lot more quickly if we just focus on it in a real world use cases and a very basic algorithm. And if you have this end to end workflow that it will work generally in a general purpose situation, I think that'll be a, a better start than to dive into all the algorithm options. So what I wanna do is begin with a the simple process of preparing our data. Before we put data into a machine learning model, we have to convert it into something that's machine readable. So we have some organic text here and we're gonna convert it into some floating point numbers. So we'll be using Python and uh, NumPy as a helper library to help us generate these matrices that we need to convert this text here Hi, sunny day into these numbers, these floating point numbers, and we'll create a, a matrix or an array, right? An, an array here. So first thing we need to do is write a function that will, <laughs> I like this, I love this code pilot. <laughs> it just automatically does code creation for us. Let's, did it work? <laughs> All right, so the code pilot created kind of a neat a thing here. So it created, it's gonna start with a vector, right? We need an array. Then we're going to convert, because our alphabet up here is only lowercase letters and numbers and a space here, there's a space character. For each character in the text in the vector, we're going to assign an index based on the character's position in the alphabet. Now this is an, an efficient approach to generating the vector because there's a lookup time period. So if you have a large amount of data, it's gonna take extra compute, but this is a good getting started setup. If it's not able to find anything in the index, then it will just continue and it won't add anything. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so this isn't the first thing that I had in mind. How However, what it's gonna do is gonna find sort of any any data that's associated with any characters. If so, it finds any characters or symbols, it's gonna create a vector and a map 
that assigns that index. So this is one approach to vectorizing our data. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So we've got our text, we're gonna vectorize it, and then we're gonna print the vector. And then we print it, and then what we see here is a representation of the sentence that we provided. It has the letter A, so you see that it has a, a one ordinal here, and then it's got zeros for uh, B, C, because there's no B or C, and then it's got a space because it has spaces. It doesn't have any numbers. And we essentially vectorize the data in a way that we can now put into a feed for a neural network. Now, this isn't going to give us a full picture of the kind of, it depends on what questions we want the, the AI to have. Like what, what are we asking of the AI? This may be more than enough in order to get the answers that we're looking for. There is uh, another general problem uh, that we, with so many zeros in here, we are going to see a lot of unactivated neurons in the matrix when we are running it through the feed forward neural network. Now, while this will work, and if you have a lot of data, it can be able to find um, a lot of classification classification. So we'll be able to say, hey, this is a, you know, maybe in this case, we're building a classifier, like is this positive or is this negative? It might be able to intuit that and it can get a pretty good accuracy. However, we're leaving a lot of these data nodes untouched, right? So this will have a significant amount of data we're just wasting a lot of data. So we can go a step further and capture higher resolution. But just as it is right now, we we actually vectorize the data. This is the first step that's needed in order to prepare our data, right? We want to get that data ready before we throw it into a feed forward neural network. When we're preparing our data for a machine learning model, we have to take that organic data and convert it into machine readable data, which are going to be floating point values. And there's a lot of ways to go about doing that. And you want to sort of capture as much meaning as possible in that data. One of the first algorithms we looked at was a simple are characters there or not based on uh, an alphabet. We can go a step further and increase our resolution on the kind of data that is available to us by assigning tokens to each of these letters or these characters and uh, appending them into an array. So that way it gives us a little more context, a little more meaning so you can, it almost gives us uh, some more, more data and higher resolution. Also, with our original example here in the vector, while this is working, uh, it gives us a lot of zeros. And so it's going to create uh, the need for a, a larger a larger model, more, more neurons in order to get the data that we're looking for at the end because there's so many zeros. Uh, and that will immediately deactivate. But also at the same time, depending on your target, if you're only looking to see, hey, is this like maybe a good or bad sentence, uh, you might be able to get a somewhat okay amount of accuracy out of a model that does that using this kind of approach here. But we can do better, let's do better. So for an improvement, what I wanna do is generate a vector map that takes and assigns values to each letter in a floating point number that starts and ends with uh, start at negative two to positive two. So what will this do is it creates a gradient of values between this line that will allow us to assign meaning to each letter that the AI will be able to have an understanding of. And this is great because it helps us create a, a nicer gradient and we also have some meaning of position within the letters. So we'll want to create a vector map using our alphabet and ending with positive two. So our code pilot gave us a nice example here of uh, getting started. This We need to go a step further though. So we've got our vector map which is going to give us a value be uh, starting with A which should be negative two and then ends with uh, a space, right? So if you look at our alphabet we start with A and then we end with the space and so the zero value should be somewhere in the middle and what this will do is create more of a nice gradient between each of the letters okay so we had to help we had to help it out a little bit here we added a comment that helped us tune the data that we we're looking for now it's able to uh, better create it oh, not quite there yet but it's it's definitely better so I was able to uh, get the length of the alphabet so we'll go over I and then I think we do something like maybe like this minus two okay we'll see where we are so far if we uh, give ourselves a, a vector map, generate the vector map, and then we want to print it. Let's see here, print. Okay, so this almost worked. We got our A, it starts with negative two. B is a little bit further down. C is a little bit further down. However, our iteration steps, uh, we need to do just a little, modify that just slightly because we want to end at positive two for the last character. All right, we were able to modify our range vector map here very slightly. So we defined a new variable called vector range. We want this to be, you know, at the gradient range of, of two. 
which we're going to have it in the negative 2 range to the positive 2 range. And we modified our, our vector map per letter. So for the size of our alphabet, we want to take that alphabet, no matter how many letters we have in our alphabet, right? We can add more letters. We can have uppercase letters. We can have symbols, like emojis. We can do a whole bunch of things. We'll take that length of the alphabet and we'll divide it against its current position within the alphabet, the letter position in the alphabet. So A is, you know, position zero, B is position two. And then we want to take our range and apply it and then shift it so that way everything's uh, in between po uh, negative two and positive two. And so that's what this line does right here. And if we run that, it should give us, okay, perfect. Let me make that look a little bit better here for real quick. Hold on. Uh, pretty, let me see if I can do a pretty print. Pretty print the vector map. We have our pretty print library, and then we will pretty print the vector map. We don't need that one anymore. And then we also imported the pretty print library. So it should be look a little bit nicer here. There we go. Okay, so you can see now we've created a map for ourselves. So A is gonna be negative two, B is just a little bit less, uh, or a little bit further, and then C and D, and then it progresses from here all the way till we get to Z. So now we have this nice, smooth gradient based on the current letters that are available to us. So now we'll wanna write one more function that will leverage our generated vector map to create ourselves a new vector output. So we'll define what we want our function to do here, define it, and then the AI wants to do the function like this, which I think, it, is it right? <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that should work. Okay, so let's Let's walk through it really quick here. So we're generating our vector based on the length of our alphabet, which is not good. <laughs> we we want to do that based on the length of the input text. So then we'll use our vector map to search for that floating point value that's assigned to the letter. We did we since our since we don't in our alphabet we don't have any capital letters. Everything is lowercase. So for every character in our text, we're gonna grab. Actually, we can make this a lot simpler. I think we just simply go like this. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that should do the trick. So we get our initial vector. We're gonna index it starts to zero. We iterate through our our input text. Uh, we we lowercase it for every single char character. Our vector based on its index position, we're gonna look it up in our vector map that we've uh, pulled in here, increment or index, and then we have our vector, and that should do the trick. Let's double check that it works. So we've got our V map and text here, so this should be able to get our, our vec, this will generate our vector, and then we'll print our vector. <laughs> I think that'll work. Let's see what happens here. Oh, we got a problem. All right, let's fix that real quick. All right, we just need to just check this, make sure, because we have an explanation point, and we've not created an alphabet character for that. So we have to skip it or we can give it, let's, we'd have to give it like a default value of like, just like unknown, right? Or we could ignore it. I think we'll just ignore it. Okay, so our final algorithm should be for every character in the text, lowercase, if the character's in our vector map, we want to assign it to our new vector that we just created and return the vector. So this is what that looks like. And now we've got a nice range of data here. So we've got some zeros. That's because that's a, the, the unallocated. So those must be explanation points, right? Because our, our hey, hey, Sunny up. So we got two explanation points points here that we've not tracked. What we could do is add that into our alphabet here. So now we've got an exclamation point and that will allow us to capture that. Uh, oh, yep. And so now we've got a nice looking array without any zeros in it, which could, you know, deactivate certain neurons. And then we can use this as input data into our feed forward neural network. And that's basically it. That's what we need to do now that we can go further and we'll probably do this in another video, but we want to do some other things such as uh, correlation coefficients, which you can bake in using embedding approaches. We could also uh, tokenize and use another model that allows us to assign meaning to similar words with a pre-trained embedding model. This is gonna be more necessary for LLMs that are gonna be generating text, but we don't need that for most other kinds of AI that will be identifying and labeling and doing work for us. So we can go further and we will do that probably in, the, in another video.